This is a personal experience, but I will start by explaining a little bit of what my grandma used to tell me. We have this not so old house, around 50 years or so, that my grandparents used to live in. My mom and I when I was younger as well, before moving to a newer house on the outside of town. She always said that there lived lives a friend or so she calls her, who will sometimes roam the house during night and rarely you could hear him during daytime. He never harmed her or anyone, at least not that I'm aware of, but he will always caught you eye in a glimpse. You know when you think you see a shadow moving so you turn in order to inspect, that sort of thing. There isn't any amulet around the house except for a plate with salt under the bed my grandma used to sleep. I guess it's there since she told me one time she woke up to see a friend, sitting on the foot of a bed, while watching over just to disappear a few seconds after. After some years and due to personal issues, my mom, stepdad and I lived there for about three years. They never claimed to have experienced anything, maybe because they were sleeping in the bedroom that my grandparents used to sleep in and it had the salt, or maybe because they aren't that susceptible about paranormal. On the other hand, I slept on the room that I used as a kid and didn't have any kind of protective charm nor salt. For the three years that I lived there, a lot of times I used to hear things at night, as well as seeing shadows move here and there during night and daytime. I'm not that much into paranormal things either, so I don't know a huge amount, but every week, at least two or three times, I would wake up in the middle of the night with a feeling of being uneasy, like something was around or had just passed through. Being an old house, we didn't have an AC, so some night during the summer, I would sleep on the couch in the living room while there was a nice breeze of air. I remember clear as day that on my last summer in that house, two of those nights, I woke up in a sweat, my mom claiming that I was screaming. And what I would claim, that there was sleep paralysis never actually seen this friend like my grandma did, but I can assure you there was something in the house. Now I live in the outskirts at that same time. You know where? Exactly, in front of the graveyard. I've been living here for about a year and so far no shadows out of the corner of my eye. No weird sounds, nothing at all. The nights are peaceful and I never woke up again. Sometimes I go to that house to search for things that I forgot to pack but only for a short period of time, so I never felt anything again. Still, those experiences will go with me until the end of my days. Bonus encounter. This was before living in the old house. I lived in a flat at this time when we were, came back from a long car travel my parents left, and I went to take a shower. Before entering the bathroom, something caught my eye, and when I turned my head to see what it was, I saw this tall lady in a wedding dress for a split second before it vanished. I was paralyzed and rushed inside the shower until my parents came back. Never talked about it with them since I blame it on the journey fatigue, but who knows? Never experienced anything else while living there. This happened a year ago, but my husband and I still talk about this experience because it was truly bizarre and I struggled to find an explanation for it. It was late at night and rainy. Our living room has a clear view of the street and all the cars parked along it. My husband and I were chatting in the living room when I passed by the window and a person standing outside caught my eye. It was an average build adult male wearing a beanie. He was standing behind our car parked on the street, just standing straight still. I asked my husband, Hey, what's that guy doing? Our neighborhood deals with frequent car thefts and break-ins, so I was at first worried this dude was scoping out our car to steal or rob. He says, what guy? I kept thinking he couldn't see him because of the rain or the angle I was standing at. I had him stand in the exact same spot I was, describing exactly what he was wearing and where the man was, but my husband was never able to see this man. I was annoyed at first, just thinking he wasn't looking closely enough. But the longer I argued, the weirder I felt. Like I was seeing something right in front of me that my husband just couldn't see. I turned around at one point, and the second I turned back to look, the man was gone. I know it was night and rainy, but we live in a city with lots of lights and bars. We have a direct view of a main street in the neighborhood. 
He was gone from my sight within half a second of me turning to look away. I still see him in my memory. Blue beanie, brown coat, jeans, boots. Just standing perfectly still by our car. I saw him as clear I see anything else, yet my husband, standing next to me, saw nothing. I've never experienced anything like that before or since, and it freaks us out both out to this day. I just turned on a guided sleep meditation on YouTube, like I often do, and the guy who speaks in the video often makes a 5-10 to 10 second pause in between his sentences. After listening for about 5 minutes, I started to slowly sleep in. You know when you start to doze away but you're still there. And in those 10 seconds when my half sleeping brain is getting used to the absence of a voice, and then suddenly he starts to speak again. My body or my brain reacts with a short and weird flash and I startle. You know that sound when you have your headphones on your head and you don't plug the cable in properly? And you rub the cable on the port and it makes like a... It's very quick and short. That weirds me out, but that wasn't what terrified me so much. After five more minutes, I was dozing away again. Until the point I didn't even listen to what the guy in the video said. And then it happened. A very loud breathing kind of noise right next to my ear. The duration was about two or three seconds. Uh, it was first not that loud, then loud. Like, oh. And I freaking jumped out of my bed and turned the lights on. The weird thing is, it wasn't purely external. It wasn't only the noise. It was accompanied with goosebumps in the earlier mentioned flash. So what the hell is that? Anyone experienced something like that? I'll give some context beforehand. I decided to take a quick stroll in the garden before going to sleep. There I saw my only cat. She greeted me, then she walked off for her usual night patrols. When she wants to enter the house, she usually makes it quite clear by standing near the door and meowing. But this wasn't the case. She walked off in the opposite direction from my house. Then I went inside, closed the door and went to sleep. There were no other doors or windows open so the cat could not have gone inside until someone woke up the next morning. This will be important later. So about half an hour after I went to bed, I was half asleep, about 3.30 in the morning, the usual time for paranormal activity, and I felt something walking on my mattress beside my leg. At first I thought it was my cat, because the footsteps had the same distance and weight of a cat. But then, after a couple seconds since I was half asleep, I put together all the reasoning explained before about my cat not being there. As soon as I realised that I understood it was something else walking on my bed, I got scared really fast. My first thought was, I must not open my eyes, I don't want to see what is there. Then I tucked myself under the blanket and calmed down. I fell asleep again after half an hour and woke up like usual, without anything more strange happening. I'm 18 now, but from ages 3 to 11, my family and I lived in a large, four-bedroom Victorian home. It wasn't really the location you would expect a haunted house to be in. We were right next to a busy street in a row of other houses. All very old though. The house had three floors as the attic had been converted into two bedrooms, and a large walk-in storage cupboard that separated the two rooms. I lived with my three older half-siblings, and so it was very common for us to swap rooms every few months. I'd slept in every room, my parents' room quite often as I was terrified every night, more on that later. The large room opposite theirs and the two attic rooms. Each one seemed to have its own different type of horrors. For the first few years, I was too terrified to sleep on my own as a kid. I barely slept and when I did, I suffered from terrible nightmares. So I would sleep in a camp bed on, in their room that was where I had my first encounter with sleep paralysis. I couldn't have been older than six, but I still remember it vividly. A small boy with a paper bag over his head 
seems to emerge seemingly from the wall next to my mother's side of the bed and slowly but surely was walking around their bed towards me. I remember looking to my side and there was what I can only describe as a tall black stick figure like one of those drawings who was looking above me. I couldn't move. I was sweating profusely but I knew I was awake. The next thing I knew he was crouching down to me and the boy had reached the foot of my bed. It was that moment I managed to let out a scream. I've never had anything as vivid as that again, but I'll never forget it. When I was seven or eight, I started wanting to have my own room. I did a lot of reading to distract myself from the fear, and often would stay up to the early hours reading, too terrified to sleep, waking up in the morning with my books still in my arms. I was given one of the attic rooms. By that point, my older sister had the room opposite mine but she'd gone off to university and so I was alone up there. I would never dare sleep without the light on and to be honest, old habits never die. As even now I still sleep with a light unless I'm with my boyfriend. Most nights would be me reading as long as I could until I just had to close my eyes. It was then that the voices would start. Like there was a couple arguing in the hall. On some of the worst nights, I swear I could hear breathing coming from under my bed. It came to a point where I was so scared, I had to have my dog and cat sleeping in my room with me, but they couldn't settle. My dog would just keep crying and my cat was constantly spooked. They hated being in there, so I had no choice but to remain alone. The night terrors continued. I'd wake up and just couldn't stand to be in that room anymore. So I'd creep down to the second floor and sleep outside my parents' door. I don't know how I even functioned with so little sleep. Most times I couldn't have sleepovers as my friends would complain of being scared and hearing things. My siblings had similar experiences. When my sister had her friend over, often a friend would recount walk waking up in the night and my sister was sitting up in bed still asleep but talking to the dark corner. My brother would have his covers pulled off him in the night and my other sister recalled her toes being pinched while sleeping. Everyone had their own experiences in that house even non-believers. My dad recounted being locked out from the outside of the house when he was out in the garden. Even though he was the only one home, seeing a dark shadow figure glide next to the door as he struggled to open it. Times I would be sitting outside my parents room at three in the morning and I would hear the cutlery drawer downstairs being shaken, the TV being turned on for a split second and then off, even though everyone was asleep. I couldn't do anything in that house without the feeling I was being watched. If I was alone in the house, I'd stay out in the garden the whole time. Even then I felt extremely uneasy. I would sit on my trampoline and feel like a pair of eyes were watching me from the living room window that looked out into the garden. Our elderly neighbour told my father the backstory of the house, while my dad would sometimes recount the strange occurrences going on in the house. He told us years before we moved in, I lived a very reclusive middle-aged woman, known to be very cold and unwelcoming. She didn't often leave, only to go to work as a gym teacher. She was known to be sadistic and cruel to the children she taught. He mentioned something extremely chilling though, which was that she had confided in with him once that she lived in fear of the house. She refused to go in the attic as it terrified her. She died several years before we moved. One of the most chilling things was that once she passed, the house was completely renovated. The attics turned into rooms, as I mentioned. The flower beds Mrs. Evans had so much pride in, torn up, everything changed. The work was mostly done by one man, who had been hired to do so by the local council who inherited the house. Miss Evans had no family to speak of. Just days after he'd finished up the renovation, his daughter died in a freak lightning accident. I personally have no idea if it's tied. It was terribly unfortunate either way. But the neighbors seemed to think that whatever was in that house certainly did not take kindly to it being damaged and decided to take some revenge. That is just hearsay, mind you, but it's chilling nevertheless. I believe there were several entities in that house, including possibly Mrs. Evans herself, but the strongest residing in the attic. I felt things up there that I have since never encountered again. A genuine feeling of something evil, something that wants to hurt you. 
I can't even recall how many times people were seemingly pushed when going down the stairs from the attic, or whatever, my cat, who was usually the most lovely boy was near those stairs, he would viciously attack you with no explanation for this outburst. The whole house had its moments, it was in a constant state of darkness and bitter cold, but the attic? I don't even have the words to describe what that was. When We finally moved when I was 11, and as if by magic, the nightmares disappeared. I could finally sleep easy. We've moved several times since then, and I've never encountered a house like that before. Honestly, I haven't had any paranormal experiences I can think of since being in that house, but that's fine for me. It was enough for a lifetime. I do think it will always be with me though. Sometimes I'll have the most vivid dreams that I'm back there, and I'm so glad to be there. Almost as if it's calling me back. I've always been skeptical, even though I've had plenty of paranormal experiences. Ever since I was young, maybe four or five, I've seen what looks like ghosts. I'll see random people for a few seconds and then they will disappear. Some people I would see were pretty scary. When I was nine, I told someone about it. Big mistake. Everyone said I did it for attention and that it was all in my head, blah, blah, blah. My mum would constantly tell me that there were no ghosts. Now that you have some backstory, here's what happened last night. I was in the washroom, getting ready for bed and brushing my teeth. I turned around and saw one of the two ghosts I believe are in my house in my husband's side of the bed. It vanished after a few seconds. It freaked me right out, like seeing them usually does, so I told myself how it's all just in my head and ghosts aren't real. As soon as I said ghosts aren't real, bathroom lights flickered. So either a creepy coincidence happened or I really did see a ghost. Why would the lights flicker suddenly after saying that? I know lights do that all the time, but this was strange. I'm still a bit of a skeptic, but I swear with every experience I have, I believe more and more. And after this happened last night, I believe even more now. So about a year ago, my uncle died of a massive heart attack. He was 65 years old. He left me with his motorized scooter that I used for fun until I fix it up and sell it. It's in rough shape, but it drives nicely. Even though my uncle died a year ago, I just managed to get the scooter about a week because I finally found some time to hire a U-Haul and get it from my grandma's house. So anyways, on to my encounter. I wanted to drive it this morning, but the battery was low, so I decided to charge it. I tried everything I could think of to put the plug thingy into the scooter, but nothing worked. I spent a good 10 minutes trying to figure out how this thing plugged in. I was starting to get frustrated and was about to YouTube it. I don't know why I didn't think of looking it up sooner. But just as I was about to go back into the house to get my phone, I heard my uncle's voice in my head saying, you have to put it in, turn it and then push it. And on, that's exactly what I did and it finally plugged in. I couldn't believe it. I'm still kind of creeped out now, a few hours after it happened. Which is weird because I've never been seeing ghosts since I was young. They usually don't talk to me though. And I never saw my uncle, I only heard his voice. This is the third weird thing that has happened since he died. But the other two things happened in my dreams. The night before the funeral, I had a dream of my uncle's moles lighting up all over his face. I know it's weird lol. And then at the funeral, I saw his face and they removed all the moles. That kind of freaked me out. The second dream I had of him was a while after the funeral. I was on an elevator and it stopped. My uncle was standing in the doorway and before entering the elevator, he says, is this going up? He got on the elevator and it went up into the clouds and then I woke up. The dreams really had me wondering if it was really my uncle coming to me to say he's okay or not. But after the experience with the scooter today, I strongly believe that it was him coming to me in my dreams. I see things driving around at night. Things like shooting stars dropping from the sky at 3am on the horizon of New Mexico and Arizona. Though one of these shooting stars did something I've never seen before. I will admit, 
I've not been a truck driver for very long, a little less than a year, and I'm working towards that goal. My experience would be far less than some of the things that other people have seen. However, I still have experiences as well. This shooting star is one of those experiences. Shooting stars are either meteor or space junk falling through the atmosphere of the Earth. They aren't like you would see in the movies and cartoons and animated film. They will also just drop down straight depending on where the position is. West horizon is in which direction you're facing. This one star in particular didn't drop down at first, but just looked like a normal star hovering in space, like any other star that might still exist out there. It stayed there and then it shot and disappeared. Its disappearance was like a bend in the atmosphere. How it did this confuses me. I've never heard of anything like this before. This could easily be a scientific form for how space debris literally burns up as well though. That wouldn't account for the fact that it was bright enough for it to stay as a star in the sky, stationary, before shooting up as if it had somewhere to be real quickly. This is the only one of many encounters I see nightly as I drive from midnight to noon due to the traffic being the lightest between these points and parking being the easiest to find when convenience is needed. Hey guys, last Friday me and my boyfriend found this huge amazing looking dream catcher that we decided to buy. My partner noticed that three of the beads were missing and one of the strings was cut in half. I didn't think too much about it. The dream catcher still looked fine so we decided to buy it. We were partying pretty hard that weekend and didn't get much sleep but since Monday night both me and my partner have had the worst sleep in dreams. First off, I'll just add that I'm suffering from restless leg syndrome and without medication, I wake up several times in the middle of the night to twist and turn my legs in an attempt to get rid of that unpleasant feeling. Before going to bed Monday night, I took my medication as I always do, yet woke up several times because I had to move my legs. It felt like the times when I forget to take the pill before going to bed. That night I ended up sleeping on the couch because it was too uncomfortable to try and stay asleep in bed. After an hour of sleeping on the couch, my boyfriend walked out of the bedroom and woke me up. He asked me why I wasn't in bed, and he said that he had the most horrible nightmare ever. Woke up panicking and turned to my side to bed to cuddle me, but realizing I wasn't there. The next morning, I asked him what he had dreamt, and he said that someone took his kids away from him and that he would never see them again. Since Monday night, me and my partner have had really fucked up and stressful dreams. Both of us have woken up several times each night and in general, just had a really disturbed sleep. I've also woken up drenched in my own sweat. So what do you guys reckon? Could the broken dream catcher have an impact on our sleep? Should we take it down, get rid of it, put it out in the sun? Also, I had a really weird dream last night where I found a little pimple on my shoulder, which I popped. Blood and pus kept coming out after a while. I managed to pull out a long slimy string. After pulling out the string I pulled out what looked like a tube and then a cocoon sack with a bird inside with a big beak. The bird transformed into a human and he started to trick me so I got confused and lost in the dream. My boyfriend said that dreams like that are demonic. Any thoughts on that? This happened like 13 years ago when I was 16 or 17. I used to hang out with my summer apartment neighbors. We all were coming from different places to that town for summer and neighbor to neighbor, we ended up being a lot of people. Well, results that a neighbor of my neighbor was some kind of expected use of a Ouija board, Nacho. And with all the stories he told us, we decided to give it a try. Then, one night we went to a park near the station with a board we made that day with a piece of wood material that we painted there the alphabet. Yes, no, hello, bye, and zero to nine. It was very symmetric and we were so proud of it. At first we were five and we slightly put our fingers on the glass situated at the center of the board and Nacho started to say, if there is any entity that would want to contact us, say yes. 
He repeated this four or five times and the glass started to tremble. We were all amazed at this point because no one can make a glass tremble with just a finger on it without being too obvious. And Nacho said, now to get stronger, make circles around the center of the board. And it gradually was getting more speed and more accuracy. And he said, now for being sure that nobody is moving the glass, we will take our finger out and putting on again one by one while it continues making circles. And the glass continued making perfect circles at an outstanding and stable speed and accuracy. Now go to the edge of the board and leave half glass outside of the board. And do the same at the opposite edge, he said. I think this was totally for free and unnecessary, but it was perfectly accurate. Executed the several times that it had done that. Then we started to talk with it. I remember a few things and disordered. Meanwhile, we were there. More friends were arriving and we ended up being 15 and 20 people around the board, but just five of us with the fingers in. I said his name was Victor and he died of tuberculosis in 18 something. Someone asked him what was his favorite football team and he said, Nastic A1. And someone said that Nastic, a football team from Tarragona, was being promoted to the first division recently. Someone asked, if, asked where it shits and it said in your face. All of us started to laugh, a little frightened. And while we laughed, it said, J-E-J-E-J-E. -J -E -J -E. Use your way to write a laugh on that back on those days. And that scared us way more. We asked if he wanted to smoke because we were smoking weed and drinking. It said yes. Then Nacho lifted up a little of the glass and leave a puff inside it. I remember too that Nacho asked at the beginning of the session if it doesn't want any one of us. Whom, where, with the fingers on it. And the glass pointed to a girl that was on a very skeptical mood and joking about all this stuff. She withdrew the finger. Everything was smooth and cool until it said, go, quick. We asked why and it just repeated that. We asked if it can say bye. It said bye. We left the place and in five minutes it started to rain. I don't know if it was concerned about us to get wet or it was just for another thing. We tried to make another session the next day. But without Nacho, Nacho, it just didn't work. I'm sure this was because of Nacho's absence. I always feel like I'm being watched in my room when all the blinds are closed and doors shut and no possible way for anyone to see me since I first moved in when I was 10. Still feel like I'm being watched when I'm there to this day. Also this year, I heard taps on my window sounding like claws or fingernails, not birds. And I saw a shadowy figure watching my brother. And I at the bus stop hiding, leaning from one of those horse stalls. I was stop us next to a horse area. To the point we started bringing flashlights to see if we, if we were seeing shit. My brother had it worse. He said it sounded like someone was trying to break into his window. Like he heard pounding, scratching, stuff like that. Then one day my mum did a spell and things mostly stopped. I'm 15 and my brother is 17 by the way. My brother said when he explained why he thought what was happening and he said something about challenging gods and demons that were giving his girlfriend a hard time. Personally I'm not religious or superstitious. All I know is that some weird shit happens sometimes with no logical explanation. During that time my brother told me not to look at whatever was doing it because if I did he said and I quote I'm fucked. My brother and I's room is on the second floor by the way. There's no way to get to my window from outside unless you're Spider-Man because it's just a wall with no trees nearby. My brother's has a tree nearby and has part of the roof extending from near its window. His window is also about half the length of his room. Last July, I lived in Wilmington, North Carolina with a couple of my buddies from high school. One night, me and my friend decided to go to the beach after midnight to just escape and talk about life. We get to the beach around midnight and we decided to go sit on the vacant lifeguard tower. Now, it's a Saturday night, so there are other people around on the beach and we were used to this fact. While we're talking on this tower, I noticed a man wearing all black walking towards us from near the pier. 
The pier is about 200 feet from us. Like I said before, there were many other people on the beach, so I just kind of ignored the figure and kept on with our conversation. About 20 minutes goes by and people are starting to leave the bench and this thing is walking towards us. Now my friend is aware of it and we both kind of stop and observe it. The figure was about five or six feet tall, kind of looked like a drunk man slowly shuffling towards us, was wearing a black t-shirt and black pants with a black cap on. The eerie thing about him was that there were no facial features at all. Now, we saw others in the bench earlier and we could make out faces, but this thing was different. The figure was headed straight for the lifeguard tower we were at, so my friend and I also got into fight or flight mode as it approached us. Both of us got silent and watched as the figure shuffled up under the tower, and we immediately started looking around the tower. It vanished. There was nowhere it could have gone without us seeing it. It was just gone. We decided to leave very shortly after that, and we didn't really speak much about it in the car ride home. The part that still haunts me is the lack of a face. It was just looking into a black void. So, I was 9 to 11 years old, now 33. And every time I took a shower, I looked through the bathroom window for some minutes because I liked to imagine myself jumping from roof to roof. From that window, you could see a wide portion of the neighborhood roofs and a church at the end. That window had a curtain. One night before taking a bath, I opened the window and started to watch the roofs as usual and imagine myself jumping around. This time I immediately felt something weird, like I was being watched. I started to look the roofs in more detail as fear was building up in my guts because I felt something was there but I couldn't see it. After a couple of minutes I could see something weird two houses ahead of mine. A kind of transparent shadow that for some reason looked like a big winged creature. I stared at it for what felt like minutes but should have been just a couple of seconds and out of nowhere I understood that it was looking at me and fear became panic. I closed the curtain and jumped to the shower just to hear a huge impact on the window followed by a tremble in the whole bathroom. My parents think screamed thinking I fell, but it was just that thing. Never again did I look out that window, always in fear of that creature. I've lived in my parents house a couple of times in the latest years and every time I go to that bathroom, I remember this. When I was 16 to 17 years old, I worked at a banquet hall in the town I grew up in. It was an awesome job with awesome co-workers and decent pay. Not to mention I got to chow down on wedding cake twice a week from April to November. However, something about the place never felt quite right. I did not like being alone in the main ballroom, the mezzanine room or the large storage area directly adjacent to the main ballroom. To be fair, the reason I didn't like being alone is because when I was, I actually felt like I wasn't. It's hard to explain, but it felt as if each time I turned around to look over my shoulder because I felt a sense of dread or the presence of another person and saw nothing, the panicky feeling got worse. These feelings persisted without any tangible events occurring for roughly six to seven months. Then, one Saturday night in July, I was locking up the mezzanine room, which involved me turning off all the lights, proceeding down the long entrance hallway, exiting the building and locking the door from the outside. I remember having a strong feeling of dread and concern, so much so that I ran down the hallway to the door. I went outside, turned and locked the door, and then I made a mistake. The doors were glass, but with the outside lights on and the indoor lights off, you couldn't see inside the hallway behind a foot or so. I was feeling a bit relieved from having made it outside, and after locking the door, I knocked three times and said good night. I turned to walk away and made it about three or four steps when I heard a distinct banging on the glass doors. Three times, and then a sound I would never forget. It was a guttural sound, very deep, but it was undistinguishable. I wish I could have been clocked at the speed with which I ran out to my car. I had to break some kind of record. I sat in my car for a couple of minutes and just tried to catch my breath before driving home. I never shared this with any of my co-workers because I hardly wanted to believe it myself. 
but it happened and it stuck with me for almost 20 years.